Hi, this tutorial, uh, I'm going to go for uh, explore a very useful tool, which consists in digitalize some graphs. So sometimes we just find some good graphs like this one that I just picture in the slide here that are coming from a book or on any reference or a paper. <clears throat> and we would like to digitalize this one to place it in our own or compare it with our own data. So we want to extract the data from this figure to um, um, extract the data points and try to plot it in our own software. In our case, we are going to use MATLAB to do that. Now, to do that, um, I found a really useful um, code that was already programmed by Giro uh, Doc, and you can find in this link here. And the tool is called Gravit. So the Gravit is basically a code that it can it's run uh, into MATLAB. And when you are running this code in MATLAB, you can uh, extract manually the data from the plot that you want to um, you want to digitalize. <clears throat> so we are gonna use that this uh, tool in this tutorial, and also we are gonna explore um, the function in MATLAB called interp1 interpolation 1D which basically help us to um, fit the data properly after digitalization. So we'll be going to explore that and compare our um, initial graph with our final version in MATLAB. Remember always to check the uh, online information uh, about the different variables. So in this case, interpolation 1, interpolation 1D, this is the uh, MATLAB um, help file where it, you can explore all of the options of, the, of this function. And also here you could see <clears throat> the other link where I extracted the, this Gravit program. So as you notice here, there is the function. So you just copy this and paste in a variable in MATLAB and you can run this program in MATLAB. So this is the program that we are gonna use for our digitalization. Now, Coming to MATLAB uh, platform, so here I just created a folder called Gravit where I uh, place the code that I downloaded or I copy from uh, the web page. So this is the same code here in MATLAB structure. And uh, in this folder, I also pl uh, place the picture that I want to digitalize. In this case, the picture that I show you before in the slide. <clears throat> so the picture is in PNG format here in the same folder and the Gravit in the same folder. That's important that they must be in the same folder. That helps a lot in the program. <clears throat> now we are gonna uh, run this um, section. So this function, so you can run it. And basically you will see that a new common windows open. So now this is a common windows that is running this Gravit uh, app. And the first thing that we're gonna do is load the image. So basically click there, selecting the image that we want to digitalize. In this case, this figure. <clears throat> and here is the digital version of the figure. Now, the first thing that we need to, needs to be done is calibration. So you need to be careful what kind of access you have. In this case, you need to check if your access are linear or they are a logarithmic scale. In this case, they are linear, as you notice here in temperature in Kelvin, and in this case, uh, uh, viscosity, in this case, uh, Pascal over per second or a uh, centipoises in the other scale. So they are related, as you see, 0 0.01 centipoises is approximately one at the power of minus five pascals, Newton over meter square uh, per second. So Pascal per second. <clears throat> um, so we have linear scale here. So we need to first calibrate the image. So you need you can use these um, ticks marks for calibration your plot. So in this case, for example, I'm gonna calibrate the X and Y. So first gonna click calibrate and it tells me the X origin. Basically in this case, I'm gonna take as an origin this plot, which I know the value and you can just click uh, until you just reach a certain level. So for example, there and the value is gonna be 400. So I'm gonna click 400 and click enter. Now I set that one. So the XM is gonna be kind of a, a higher point. So the maximum, it's not as it needs to be the maximum, but at least a higher point. So I'm just gonna click until I kind of uh, happy with my <coughs> target. And in this case, this value is gonna be 1400, enter. 
So now I calibrated the X value. Now I automatically jump to the uh, Y. So the Y's origin, it could start from zero, for example, to six. So let's start by this one instead. So I click there, this is enter value one. Uh, let's go to the six. approximately there, so value six. So now I <coughs> calibrated my plot. And as you notice here, there is some options to basically zoom in or zoom out. I have some issues sometimes zooming in and zooming out. It, sometimes it just messed up with my calibration. So I prefer to leave it in a default way like this. <coughs> and I just don't move it because sometimes it affect my calibration. So I'm gonna leave it in this uh, default and I'm gonna start I click here in the uh, option. I'm going to start to grab the points, okay? And for this case, I can grab, you know, any line. In this case, I'm going to go by the air curve. So as you notice, basically the air curve, it comes. So I'm going to click in grab points and I'm going to click in the different points that I'm going to grab. And you can give it some a particular space. Try to give it a good space, you know, good spacing and as close as you can just to try to follow the shape of the plot. So I'm going to click grab and I'm going to start by my first point probably here. There is an option, as you said here, they said backspace if or delete if I just are not happy with my last point. So I just click backspace and as you notice, basically delete the last point uh, so I can redo it. Now, when I'm point with my grabbing my points, you notice that the software automatically plot here the plots that I want. And the only thing that I need to do for finishing is set that enter, okay? So I'm gonna start enter when I'm happy with that. And you are gonna notice that the data points are gonna be uh, plotted here in this uh, variable called data 001, and, and I plot 29 points two uh, columns, the X and Y. So there are 29 points, X and Y. So those are the data points that I wanted to extract from this plot. Coming back to the uh, MATLAB atmosphere, we noticed that uh, we have now uh, the data points here in the workspace. So basically uh, the data points that we grab from the Gravit program now are here uh, plotted in the uh, workspace as work as uh, safe as a word data. And if I double click, you are going to notice that we have two columns. In this case, we have X and Y. X correspond to the temperature and Y to the density according to our calibration. <clears throat> so we have all of our experimental data here that we uh, have from the plot. So everything looks pretty good, very consistent. So now what I'm going to do, for example, is gonna let's uh, open a new script for now. So I'm going to open a new script. And I'm going to create a figure that's called figure two. And I'm going to say hold on to hold it. And I'm going to plot uh, the data 0, 0, 1. And I'm going to put all of the data points from the, all of the rows. So it's column, comma, row one, or column one. Sorry, all of the rows, column one. And in the X data is going to be data. <clears throat> 0, 0, 001, and I'm going to plot all of the plots, but in this case, column two. Okay. So let's run this code. And you are not going to notice that now we have our digital version here of our plot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So that's my digital plot. Now, those are um, individual data points that I created. And those are based in the 29 uh, data points that are extracted from the 
plot uh, that I just digitalize. Now, what if I, I want to see more values? For example, I want to know the temperature around 1,000, right? So in this case, if you notice, uh, if I go to my data points, probably I don't have exactly the value of 1,000. I have close to 1,000, 998, 998, and 1,043. No, and that's going to be approximately 4.2, but what exactly? So if I want to do that, I should do a linear interpolation. And that's why the second code that uh, I described before is useful. <clears throat> so if I want to say, for example, what is the uh, uh, viscosity? So let's call here the viscosity, <clears throat> right? And I'm going to place, for example, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the inter, inter Interpolation, interpolation 1D. And in parentheses, you're going to notice that first that I'm going to need to place is the X data that I have. In this case, the S data is located in data 001 and first row, column. The Y data is located in data 001 and second column. And finally, is the a, what kind of value I want to interpolate. So for example, comma, and in this case, I'm going to say for the value of 1000. Okay. So now if I run this second part of the code, let's run this section, you're going to notice that the viscosity in this case is 4.215, which corresponds to that value. Excellent. So at that, that point, everything looks great. Now, what if I want to do an inter a extrapolation? So right now, what I'm doing is are interpolating in this data. So for example, I can do for any value. But what if I want to do, for example, a value that is below or above the uh, values that I created here? So um, for example, in this case, the maximum value is at 1,400, and the minimum value is at 275. So let's say. I want to see the viscosity at 1500. So, you know, you can do also like a linear interpolation and you'll notice that it's going to be around here, but you need to do that calculation manually. You can do the same calculation here with the um, code, but in this case, we're going to put 1500. But if I run right now, it's going to create an error because it's out of the boundary. So what I need to do is I'm going to put an option and as you see, comma, and I'm going to put a, linear, for example, linear, and extrapolation. So I'm going to do a linear extrapolation. And when I run it, I have a value of 5.25 viscosity, which basically corresponds to this interpolation now. <clears throat> now, this is a linear interpolation. But what if I want to do a more uh, kind of following the shape? So in this case, there are another, well, another options, as you notice here. We have a linear, we have near, nearest. And we have maxima, previews, and cubic. And usually what I use is this P, P chip, which basically it's a kind of a um, more smart way to calibrate. So as you notice here, it's different from the previous linear velocity. In this case, it's 5.1869. Um, which basically corresponds to the uh, following this curve here. So it's basically taking some values, doing some extrapolation, and just trying to extrapolate to the 1500 value that I want. So uh, very useful um, line of code. Now, finally, let's say that I want to interpolate in different values. So I want to interpolate between 200 and 1500 every one degree. So I can do it really simple in MATLAB 2 using the same line interpolation, but instead of doing a single value, I need to put a vector of values. So for example, I'm going to do, I want to evaluate the temperatures equals two, and I'm going to go between 250, right? It's approximately here, the value that I have. I'm going to say 250. <clears throat> and every one value, and I'm going to go up to, one fifteen hundred. Okay, so I'm creating a vector which goes from one to fifty to fifty to one uh, and fifteen hundred every one data point. Okay, so if I run just this code, it's gonna create a variable called temp with all of these vectors. 
And now the viscosity that I want is going to be, instead of a single value, is going to be interpolated in my temper, uh, in my in my vector of temperature. So it's going to interpolate for all of these values. So let's put this one here. And if I run now, I have my vector of temperatures from 200 to 1500, 250 to 1500, and the calculated viscosities. So now I can come and say, for example, in the same figure two, let's plot um, the temp temperature versus viscosity. So if I run this one, now I have my linear interpolation. So just uh, adjust a little bit this plot, put 1600 here to make it better. And uh, let's make this plot red and a tie color, for example, like that. So now we have our data points that we extracted manually, the circles, and the interpolation that we did using the, ex the digitalized data. So we can extract for every single temperature <clears throat> what is the. So now we can take our figure, for example, copy. Copy figure here. And now I can jump to um, my document, in this case, PowerPoint, and paste. So we have our. And basically we have different axes, but we have the air curve here was digitalized and those are the new values. So, so that's a pretty useful uh, tool. So in this tutorial, we just use gravity to extract data points for a digital figure and use the interpolation to interpolate those extracted points and create a continuous line in MATLAB.